it's very, very sad that, you know, that this is happening in Tokyo. The other thing are these mysterious deaths all over Japan. There's just so many of them now, you know, that people know there's an epidemic of people just collapsing. And I just had to write they to are. some people in the German, yeah, German church who uh, have, uh, you know, the churches in Japan, they're wondering what's happening. People are dropping, you yeah. know, left and right there. Yeah, it's yeah. basically cesium uh, builds up in your muscles, you know, uh -huh, especially uh -huh. in your heart. Yeah. because of the flow of blood. Yep. But, you know, the Japanese people tend to be small of stature, and they have some of the smallest parts in Japan. In fact, you know, for heart operations, they've had to redesign stents to be much smaller than the stents used in the rest of the world. So people, yeah, I've had, I've had uh, a cardiologist tell me that he's even had some women who have, uh, women in Japan who have hearts no larger than a bird's heart, you know? So they're very, very small. So it, it gathers around the heart, it not only kills muscle in the sense that once it's uh, 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 radioactive isotopes are ingested, they release gamma rays inside your cell. They break up your DNA. That DNA cannot be removed from your cell by any means, so the cell basically dies. It atrophies and dies, and you have dead muscle tissue. The other thing is that cesium is chemically similar to potassium, which is very important for controlling your heart muscles, the nerves and the heart muscles, or that whole signaling response that maintains your heartbeat. So once there's enough cesium, it doesn't take a lot, replacing the potassium in your heart, you're basically going to have very bad rhythm, you know, basically an off-rhythm heart, which, you know, basically leads to palpitations, uh, respiratory problems, and fainting in people. That's why people faint, and while they collapse, they die of a heart attack. You know? So this is what's been happening all over Japan. And you know, right now the governor, the government, the provincial governments are calling these rumors, rumors, rumors. You know, false rumors. Unfortunately, the doctors don't believe so. About 80 doctors have left Fukushima province. They realize it's not sustainable. Yeah. There's nothing they can do to help. Sure. They're only going to contribute their own death, and they're better off being at some distance from Fukushima, where over the long run they may be able to treat the victims. Once the people that really finally decide to wake up that the you know, situation is sustain unsustainable, that they cannot move back to their villages, that they have to do something else. This is an irreversible, irrevocable tragedy, both the tsunami, uh, the fact that they built a landfill along the shore. That's got to go back to the lagoons yeah. and estuaries, is another right. thing. And the uh -huh. radiation, that's not going to go away. If we're looking at 33-year half-life of cesium, good luck to the plant still bleeding. Uh, 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 radiation and uranium got, has got a 700,000 half a year half life, and then chunks of uranium are just blown out of the plant. So we're talking about for the duration, it's just going to be a, a park land. That's and then the people have to come to terms with that. Things cannot go back to the way they were. And the one thing we can do, we can't save ourselves, but we can save future, uh, future generations by not being self, not being self-centered not looking back, but trying to move forward with this reality, try to comprehend the reality, this catastrophe, the nature of this catastrophe we face. And that's why I talk to you, Jeff, is that we've got to just keep pushing this message. This thing is beyond mm -hmm. normal human powers of comprehension. Most people mm -hmm. didn't get the education they need to understand what's going on and right. how severe it is to life, to DNA, to, you know, to the very core of your life. Indeed, indeed. We have, yeah. unfortunately... Nothing to look forward to except uh, the collapse of Building 4 and the spent fuel pool yeah. there, uh, which is coming. The, this this structure itself can't last much longer. Uh, it's obviously the new, yeah. the neutron flux is uh, is deteriorating. The steel, right. the infrastructure is rotting away at a nuclear level, yeah. an atomic level, and it's going to fall. And when that happens, that yeah. will yeah. be the end of Tokyo. And will the people leave yeah. then? I, I don't know. Yeah, well, a lot of people are going to die. That's obviously clear. It's very tough. I was minimally exposed, but still have relapses. The immune system much weaker than it was, even though I'm taking a lot of herbs and all. I can bounce back still, so I'm not, you know, terminal or anything like that. But even relatively short uh, amounts of exposure have really severe effects. People that are walking around crippled, uh, the other thing is it does impair your mental faculties if you're exposed long enough. People do not have normal response time. Their, you know, their blood flow is slowing down. Blood is not getting to their brain. They cannot make decisions, uh, necessary decisions. 
for, let's say, again, I said, uh, your own survival is not as important as trying to protect the future of, the, of humankind, of humanity, that we have to, you know, uh, deal with this crisis out of a sense of responsibility that our generation completely screwed up by believing in what they call, now even the government in Japan calls it the myth of nuclear safety. Okay, the myth of nuclear safety. We've got to undo that damage, shut uh, these plants down, uh -huh. contain this fuel, and put an end to this monstrosity that we created. And that's what our generation must do. It doesn't matter how many of us die or suffer a yes. grievous effect yeah. as a result of that. Yeah. We must clean up after ourselves because there is a thing called the future. And if we don't do it, there will be no future. You know, not just as a human species. We're talking about the next intelligent species may not come about, folks, after us. You know, I mean, we may be consuming a lot of other organisms to an early end. Well, the, if, if nothing else, the, this catastrophe, and catastrophe doesn't come close, this catastrophe has shown yeah, unequivocally that Japan can get along just fine without nuclear power. And for decades, the Japanese yeah. people were told that they couldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is a, this is a huge myth. Obviously, there's only two reactors right now operating in Japan. On the uh -huh. There's only uh -huh. two reactors operating, and the economy is picking up some steam. So obviously we did not need those other 52 reactors and we probably <laughs> don't need those reactors either. So, you know, the proof's in the pudding. We can live without nuclear power. Absolutely, right? yeah. We can't live with it. That's it's the bottom line. Fuel. Well, we're going to have to live with that for a while. It's a necessary evil for now until we can come up with a better way. Mm. And instead of trying to pass laws against everything, we should be developing technology yes. and testing them, and it takes time. We, you know, we've got to work towards the future. Don't look back. Keep working towards the future and investing in that future. You know, but uh, I'm afraid, you know, we live in a culture of convenience. People aren't concerned. They look after themselves. And, uh, you know, the social order that used to hold people together has disintegrated completely, you know, Indeed. under this whole notion yeah. of globalism. Gone. Gone. The globalist looks at anything resembling society as a threat to their authority, mm -hmm. because everything they can just do to span any society that still has legs and uh, turn us into a bunch of anonymous, uh, alienated individuals who are utterly powerless. But guess what? Globalism is powerless. That's what Fukushima shows. That they are powerless against this disaster. For a year on, they have done absolutely nothing. They cannot stop it. They cannot deal with its effects. They cannot tell the public the truth about what's happening. All they can do is hide the facts and pretend like it's not happening. So I'm sorry. That form of government, this whole global myth of globalism, has also utterly failed. And then there is two are linked, nuclear power and globalism, are very, very much linked. They came out of the same That's true. set of thinking that advanced technology can solve all our problems, make our life easier, and make things like conflict and struggle and hard work would make all that obsolete. We can just walk around like God, you know, and <laughs> uh -huh. take it easy. Well, yeah. that world, I'm afraid, does not exist anywhere. And not I, even our world. It, no, it doesn't. Yochi, thank you for being yeah. here again and for everything you've contributed. And uh, you mean a great deal to an awful right. lot of people. Thank you, my friend. Well, next time it's year two. All right? You're okay. Good. All right. Be well. Yeah. Okay. Bye -bye. Take care. All right. Yochi Shimatsu. And just a wonderful human being. All right. Thanks to all of you for being here tonight. And you are appreciated. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow night. 